Tronosaurus was a massive reptile, and we've known this for a very long time. The very first fossils of it were seen in a huge deposit near the Shushan Mountains of Nevada. Just based on that, the name seems pretty self-explanatory. Now, one would think that some big bones being found near a mountain formation would garner a lot of attention. For the time though, it was actually quite the opposite. The remains were found in 1920, so there weren't nearly as many resources available for uncovering a titanic marine reptile. Because of this, it was kind of left on the ground for a while, at least until Charles L. Camp took notice, a zoologist and paleontologist who traveled the world in search of fossils. After he and his team started their mission, it wasn't until 30 years after the initial discovery that the deposit was uncovered. This is definitely longer than your usual fossil excavation, but for good reason. At the end, the team had found the remains of more than 35 individuals, all around the same area. The discovery was so monumental that Shonisaurus was declared the state fossil of Nevada in 1984. Not all of these were taken to a museum though. After a ton of persuading by Charles Camp to Nevada authorities, a barn was made over many of the fossils and it was turned into a public exhibit, now called the Berlin Ichthyosaurus State Park. Fast forward to the early 1990s, and a single specimen was found all the way in British Columbia, and yet again it suffered the same fate as the previous fossils, being ignored and deterring scientists from uncovering it, just because of its massive size and location. Thankfully, paleontologist Dr. Elizabeth Nichols took initiative, and her crew went up and excavated the entire thing in only three years. Like many prehistoric animals, Tronosaurus has had some confusing name games for quite a while. Another ichthyosaur, called Shastasaurus, has often been used interchangeably with Tronosaurus. This may not sound like a big deal, two big reptiles are basically the same thing, right? But not all ichthyosaurs are similar and the classifications we use influence our predictions of body dimensions. Shastasaurus was long and slender, a bit like a modern blue whale in stature. Tronosaurus, on the other hand, was much bigger and less streamlined, supporting a deep body almost akin to an oversized ocean sunfish. Where I'm getting at though is that the fossils found in British Columbia were initially labeled as a different species of Tronosaurus in 2004, but later, in 2011, an argument was made for it to be Shastasaurus instead of Shonosaurus. Then, almost immediately, a study was made in 2013 that reassessed the original classification of Shonosaurus. Since then, many scientists have made arguments on its true identity, though the general consensus is Shonosaurus for now. So yeah, animal classifications can be very exhausting to say the least. The skull alone was longer than the person and the entire body length was around 50 feet, or 15 meters long. Weight estimates put it in at 25 or so tons. It's not quite as hefty as a blue whale, which is the current record holder for largest animal to ever exist, at 200 tons. However, the specimen uncovered in British Columbia raised the size estimates for that species quite a bit, putting it at 70 feet long and 80 tons. It may not compare to a blue whale, but it was still the size of a Boeing 737, a giant model of aircraft. A blue whale definitely wouldn't consider a human as a snack, due to their baleen teeth specialized for eating tiny shrimp-like animals. Tronosaurus, on the other hand, probably wouldn't pass up an oblivious scuba diver. Most ichthyosaurs have teeth going far back into the jaws. Tronosaurus, on the other hand, had teeth mostly toward the front. This was likely because there just wasn't anything big enough to fit back there. The prey Tronosaurus hunted was small enough that one snap from its long snout was all it took to seal a meal. Teeth like this also mean it was hunting vertebrates, and perhaps hard-shelled animals like mollusks and ammonites. Their eyes were also huge compared to their head size, which isn't uncommon in ichthyosaurs. With marine animals, large eyes are associated with having greater sensitivity to light at low depth and darker portions of the ocean. This lines up with Tronosaurus' diet, since more variety in food options would be available as they swim further down into the deepest sea regions. This includes soft-bodied animals like squid or cuttlefish, which would have made for a very easy snack for something as big as Tronosaurus. Moving back, the vertebra of Tronosaurus dipped down at the end of the tail, creating a fin similar to a shark's. 
The difference here is that sharks and other fish have vertebrae that instead curve upwards to create the fin. So what exactly does this mean? Well, the area with vertebra is where most of the controls and nerves go into. So this means that the tail fin of Shinosaurus was larger and more powerful on the bottom than it was on the top. That design gives it a downward thrust, which would allow it to stay close to the bottom and navigate the ocean floor much easier. This is all because ichthyosaurs have lungs filled with air, giving them a positive buoyancy. Sharks, on the other hand, have a negative buoyancy, so they need a different type of tail to push themselves while swimming. This deep diving lifestyle also matches up with the four body fins, which are relatively uniform in size. Most marine animals have larger front fins and small back fins. This is to counter the downward push given by just their tails alone. With Shonosaurus, the equally sized fins might have helped give it more vertical control, allowing it to turn upwards or downwards pretty quickly, in order to catch squid, which swim vertically rather than horizontally. Now, I talked about the original discovery being the source of several individual Shonosaurus, but I haven't really expanded on why. There's a few ideas going around as to how several giant marine reptiles ended up in the same spot, but the most exciting one was that this was some kind of social group, with everything from elders to juveniles living and migrating together. This would be super cool since most of the evidence we have points to ichthyosaurs being relatively solitary animals. A pod of giant Charnosaurus certainly would be a magnificent sight, though they all also could have just been there because there was a butt ton of squid in that one area. Sadly, we don't really have a solid answer on this, at least for now. Charnosaurus seemed to be the only large animal in its environment, with its neighbors consisting entirely of animals that were on the menu. I personally think that there were likely some other marine reptiles, and maybe even sharks that we just haven't found yet, but for now it looks like ammonites, fish, squid, and other small creatures were all Charnosaurus had to keep company. Oddly enough, despite its fame as being the largest marine reptile, Charnosaurus hasn't gotten any love in movies or shows. Though if you know of any where it's featured, let me know in the comments. Thankfully, it has gotten a spotlight in a few video games. It first appeared in Jurassic Park 3 Builder Simulator, made for the Game Boy Advance in 2001. Later on, when a new Jurassic Park Builder released in 2012, Tronosaurus was seen as an unlockable for the aquatic park. Both of these depictions give Tronosaurus a dorsal fin, almost like a shark, though no direct evidence for this exists. Then, close to a year ago, Jurassic World Evolution 2 added Charnosaurus through their marine DLC pack on August 10th, 2023. The dorsal fin was removed and the overall model is surprisingly high quality and accurate in this rendition. And that does it for this episode of Prehistoric Animal of the Month. Let me know your thoughts on Charnosaurus in the comments below, ask any questions, give feedback, and make sure to suggest your favorite prehistoric animal for future videos. Give a like, subscribe to see more content like this, and more content not like this, and join the Discord to hang out with nerds like you. And head over to twitch.tv slash paleentertainment to hang with the community live. Love y'all, and as always, keep your pencils sharp.